So email addresses is a topic that's coming up for a lot of chatbot developers out there, I'm sure. Uh, you often want to ask for the user's contact uh, details and that would often include their email addresses, especially if you're trying to collect leads, etc. Um, and this is a topic in Dialogflow as well. If you've looked into it, you'll find that the system email entity has quite limited capabilities. So I wanted to do a tutorial about how to write your own uh, custom validation for email addresses. So I started with a freshly created chatbot here and all I will do is use the welcome intent to prompt for an email address. So I'm going to set this output context here, write a nice prompt. Hey, what's your email address? Of course, in real life, you need to be a bit more friendly and explain why you want their email address, but this will work for demo purposes. Then I will create the e the intent, which is going to take the email address for us. Waiting email. Okay. As a response, I want to say thank you. And then I have to create the parameter email, which I'm going to do next. And it's required, otherwise we don't want to move forward. System.email. Okay, and now the only thing that is missing is some training phrases. This is not my real email address, so it's safe to put it here. So let's do something else. So this is where it gets tricky with the system.email entity because now I oh I'm, I wrote it the wrong way around. This is how I wanted to do it. Digital, that's a real top level domain now. Okay, now everything is just crashing here. So <clears throat> let's run, let's add another example. My email is so now we have a full sentence. And also This is sometimes a bit bumpy. I'm not sure what's happening now. Okay, now we have it. Budapest, that's another top level domain. And as we'll see in a moment, it the system.email entity is not able to recognize this, unfortunately. So let's wait for the agent training to finish. Great. What's your email address? Peter at example.com. Great. So this works. Thank you for providing this. Let's do another one. Yeah, let's try this one. And now we see we're running into problems, even though this is the exact example that I provided here. The system.email entity is not able to recognize this, unfortunately. So what I'm going to do instead is use the system any basically as a wildcard to recognize any inputs here. Of course, it's useful to provide more full sentences here so that the uh, natural language processing can actually recognize uh, which part of your answer is the email address, but most people will just enter the email address. They know that they're chatting to a bot, so why will they 
go through the pain of entering a whole sentence. Anyway, and then I'm going to activate the fulfillment, the webhook call, and then write my own fulfillment. Oh, it's becoming a bit slow. What's happening? Nothing, I'm not getting any feedback. Okay, intent saved. Okay. Next step will be to activate the inline editor. Get rid of some of the boilerplate. And then I want to write my own validation handler. So I'm going to call the handler validate email. I'm going to copy that already and then get rid of some of this. Uh, we don't need all of this. And now I'm going to map my intent get email to the handler. What I, well, so I need the email address, which I can grab from the parameters. And then I want to answer, no, let's do that later. Um, so in order to validate the email address, I'm going to use a regex, which I found on this site. Uh, I, I'll put the link in the description. So essentially this is a pretty good one. It works, except that it's a bit old. So here we can see this, the part before the at, and then this, the domain name, and then we have a dot, and then this is the top level domain. Um, sorry, here's the dot, and then we have the characters of the top level domain here. Uh, but it's coming from the time when top level domains were having a maximum of three characters. So I'm going to do a modify modification here and just delete the three. So we will um, accept any top level domains from two characters on, and then there's no limit otherwise. The second change that I did is, so in the part before the add, this on, uh, in terms of special characters, this only accepts a dot and a dash, and I added a plus. So I will grab my code from here and then insert it here. So as you can see, I added a plus here, which is a a common uh, thing, a common technique that people, some people use, they add a plus and then some other word in front of the first part of the email address so they can use this to filter uh, email coming from different senders. So that's why I added that here. Um, there's other special characters that are technically allowed in email addresses. You can find it in this Wikipedia article on email addresses, which I'm also going to link. For example, you can use quotes. Um, but honestly, I've never seen anyone use it. And I don't know anyone who's aware that this is possible, which is why I'm going to ignore that for now. It doesn't seem a common use case. So if this regex uh, has tested and returns true, then I will go and add my response that I added in the intent here, which is going to be passed via the agent request body. Uh, this is the fulfillment text. So I'm just gonna return this one, the one that I entered in the intent here. If the test returns false, then I want to give another prompt, which is, Please provide a valid email address. And if I did just that, then the interaction would be over. 
because I set the uh, context waiting email to have a lifespan one, I'm going to actively reprompt here and set this context again so that when the user then enters another email address, they will, um, the get email intent will again recognize it uh, and grab that email address, which is hopefully going to be correct this time. So this is the format of how to set a context in the fulfillment code. It's called awaiting email and then I'm going to set the lifespan to one um, so that in if, when the next time in the next go uh, the user enters the correct email address I want this context to be gone to be dead essentially because if I just left it then some weird undeterministic behavior could be happening so I'm just keeping it super easy more predictable by setting the lifespan to one and I think this is it I'm going to hit deploy now it's going to deploy it and in the meantime I will go back to my intent and actually add a few more examples so as you can see in this validation, we we didn't we're not validating against a set uh, amount of top level domains, as you could have previously uh, done uh, ten years ago. You might have been able to do that, but now you basically have to be ready for new top level domains to be created anytime. So if we're working to compare to a list of top level domains then we're not future proof and whenever there's new top level domains coming up then we need to uh essentially yeah manually update that list and this is not really maintainable so now i'm just going to accept any type of um top level domain with at least two characters and uh let's put another one here Gandalf at Lord of the Rings uh, and then this is a very long top level domain just so that we have that here as well so save Intent saved. Let's see what my fulfillment code is doing. It now says it's successfully deployed. So let's give it a go. What's your email address? So first of all, I'm going to use the example from before. A pretty normal standard email address in the dot com style and now what else so I'm going to use the Gandalf one that I provided as an example this one works as well uh, I'm going to go back to the uh, Wikipedia article here and see what else I can find here as a valid email address and see if this one works Okay, yes, this one works as well, even though it's got dots here before the at and the plus, and it's a very long email address, it still works. So yeah, there you go. This is how you write a custom validation for emails. I hope it's useful, and I'm going to include the code as usual in a link in the description of the video.